Does your dog like you? Yeah. Believe it or not, you could have a dog that doesn't like you. It may never like you, or you're just messing up. I don't know. I have had several, several dogs in my life. I have several dogs now. And one thing I can tell you is they are all different, just like humans. You have different personalities come in all different makes and models and sizes. But the one thing you need to know for sure is does it like you? Because let me tell you, if your dog doesn't like you, you probably might want to get a cat because it ain't going to like you. I can guarantee you that. Cats don't like you. They just put up with you. Yeah, they're, all they care about is food. Well, dogs too. But dogs, on the other hand, can be pretty cool if they like you. All right, well, if you're, th let's just say you're thinking about getting a dog. So there's some things you need to know there, okay? Uh, I recommend don't go the breeder route. Go to your shelter. Go to a few shelters. You'll find one that, that will be drawn to you. That is the first way to know. Spend a little, don't just go in there in 10 minutes and, and try to make a decision in 10 minutes on what kind of dog you want. Because I guarantee you, you're going to make a mistake. So the best route is probably that, you know, most shelters allow you to go in there and take your time. You explain to them, you really want to take your time, find the dog that seems to like you. And you just, if you have, you go from shelter to shelter or what do you call the jail cell to jail cell that's what i call it puppy jail you know and just pull up a chair and sit there and if the dog seems to like you or shows interest in you uh it might be a choice for you but however there are dogs you have to understand that when a dog is in a shelter okay it is not acting like it normally would it is in distress it doesn't like being there. It doesn't like being caged up. So you're not really going to see how that dog, you know, might be a month down the road after you get it home. Uh, so you got to spend a little time, see what, you know, if, if the dog is showing really good interest towards you, uh, that's a good sign. If it's staying in the corner and doesn't want to approach you, most likely it isn't because it doesn't like you. It's because it's scared. And it's had bad experiences with people. And so it wants to stay as far away from people as it can. And running a shelter, I know exactly how dogs act in these situations. And what I would do is I would go in and I had the luxury of having a lot of time to spend with them. So whenever a dog would come in, I'd observe it for a while. Uh, a lot of them would come in, they did bit somebody or, you know, the, the pound, the uh, animal control had picked up. And you know, when animal control picks up a dog, it's not a good experience for them. They'll take a pole that has the uh, noose at the end and that's generally how they catch, the, you know, a dog to put in there. So they're coming in with a bad attitude as it is. They're not liking people. And, um, and, and usually they came from an abusive background or they were just dumped, okay? And they don't understand. You know, a dog is a very routine animal. And so if you take in a dog and, and you that dog builds a routine, it knows where it sleeps, it knows where it eats, it knows when it eats. And when you suddenly stop that and break that up and dump the dog, it's confused and it doesn't know. And it's, its number one mission is to look and to run around and look and try to find its way back home because it doesn't understand what you did and just a, a lot of people just don't care so if you get a dog from a shelter it doesn't matter where you get the dog even if you got it from a breeder which I I do not agree with uh, we should not be breeding dogs when there are plenty in the shelters and believe me they are full but no matter where you get a dog whether you get it from a friend you get it from the shelter there is a period of time adjustment time that it takes uh, generally 
three to four weeks, you bring it in the home. The first few days are usually rough. You have to tell, you got to let the dog know, this is your area. This is your bed. This is your bowl. And it may not understand that at first. So you have to have a, a awful lot of patience. Uh, my little dog, Rooster, she tried my patience for the first week. Uh, just running all over the place, grabbing things. She was a uh, hell on wheels, hell on paws. But I stuck with her and, you know, I, she's just, she's listening. I don't want her to get a big head. But she's a great little dog. So you have to give them patience in the beginning and, and try to put them in somewhere, you know, if you can bring them in the house with you, that is the best way to get to know your dog. Uh, every, you feed it the same time every day. If you feed them twice a day, we'll feed it the same time in the morning. Uh, adapt that to your routine. Please understand after you feed a dog within the first 15 minutes, they're going to want to go outside and take a dump. So you get that routine down. You do the same thing every day and the dog will get used to that and expect it. Now, if a dog truly after the, you know, a month, two months, and you don't think that dog still don't like you, well, it may not. You may not be a, uh, the right person to have a dog. Uh, you do not want to be stuck with a dog that doesn't like you. Well, how do you know if it likes you? Well, it watches your every move. When you get up out of your chair, it follows you. Uh, when you go to bed, it follows you in there. It may try to get up in the bed with you if you allow that. Uh, if it doesn't do these things, it probably doesn't care less about you. And it, it happens. Some people are just not dog people. I, I know a few uh, that want to get dogs, but I can guarantee you they're not going to be good with them. But sometimes, but here's the issue with that. You get one out of the shelter and you find out you don't like a dog. Well, that dog has to go back to the shelter or never, never dump a dog. But most likely the dog will end up back in the shelter. And if this happens multiple times to the dog, well, it, it does not trust humans, um, <laughs> you know. You can't blame the dog. I have a dog named Millie who was given to somebody. I didn't know the whole story until this year, but she was given to somebody who wanted to use her for hunting. Well, the guy packed up and moved, and there's Millie. Just left her. And so Millie was kind of a gypsy for a couple of years till she came to me. Uh, she actually stayed here almost a year and then took off, left me with a load of puppies. We, we got that taken care of. And then she was gone for two and a half months. Well, I got her back. She hasn't left since. She's a, a change dog. I could tell. I don't know what happened in that two and a half months, but she doesn't want to go anywhere now. She wants to be here. I go outside. She follows me. Uh, there's two outside dogs. They follow me everywhere I go. Doesn't matter where I'm at. They want to be there. So there's signs, you know, if you're so naive that you can't tell if a dog likes you, uh, number one, you probably have no experience with dogs at all, or you just don't refuse to believe it. But if they're not following you around, uh, they're not approaching you, wanting to be petted, and not all dogs will do that. Uh, it took a long time before Millie uh, was comfortable getting, uh, you know, getting attention, but now she just can't get enough of it. So I would recommend doing a lot of research. If you're into a specific breed, know that there are, there, there's personalities to individual breeds. A German Shepherd is not going to act the same as a Jack Russell. Uh, a Jack Russell is not going to act the same as a Pit Bull. Um, there's just, and then you never know what you're going to get. And I've actually had a dog that had mental issues. Uh, it was not a good situation. I gave that dog a home for nine years and it ended up getting to the point where, you know, the dog was dangerous. Uh, and people that watch my channel know the rest of the story on that. And sometimes there's nothing else you can do, guys. And dogs do not live as long as us. So that is something to consider, especially if you're going to adopt a senior dog, which 
I do not, uh, I recommend that to a lot of people, but you have to be equipped and financially secure where that dog can get medical attention because it's going to probably need it. Uh, so many times I've seen dogs dropped off at the shelter simply because they were getting old and the person could not afford the veterinarian care, which is awful. You don't have a dog for 15 years, 10 years, and then just when it gets old, drop it off at the shelter. It's a lazy person in my mind that does that. Because if you was put the word out to people, hey man, my dog, my dog needs medications or what. If you're a good person and you know enough people, I imagine people are willing to help you with that. But you don't have to dump the dog. Uh, and it's hard. It's hard losing animals. But that's what you sign up for. So if, if you're wondering if you've never had a dog, go visit the shelter. See what your chemistry is with dogs. If, if the dogs were all repel, even in a shelter environment, they're still going to come up to you. There's, most of them will still come up, want you to pet them. They want your attention. They're, they're cooped up in there 24 hours a day. So any interactions, you know, it may be their first experience as in a shelter. Most times it is. Um, Brewster, my little dog, actually, she came from Georgia. And the shelter I was running, I opened, you know, there was a couple of us there involved. I opened the door the next morning, there she was. And, I'm, uh, and, I, and I had been looking for a little dog uh, to be in the house here with me. And she was the perfect match. And that was eight years ago and had her ever since so you know be prepared to deal with that responsibility um, I'm gonna close here in a minute but also keep in mind if the dog if you get multiple dogs or one dog and you like to travel well you better find out if that dog likes to travel with you uh, because it's very difficult to get people to watch your dogs feed your dogs uh, so you don't want to be, you know, if you're, if you travel a lot for work or whatever, you know, you need a little dog that can go with you or just don't get a dog because, you know, you don't want to be putting that on people to, uh, constantly care for the dog. The dog probably won't like you if you're never home. You know, there's just a lot to consider. If you have friends with dogs, go watch their relationship with the dogs. You know, a dog will let you know. If it don't like you, it may tolerate you, but you should know if the dog don't like you. I've come across very few like that. Because uh, I, I like, and, and dogs pick up. If you like them and you love them, they know. And they'll pick up on that. So, not trying to put anybody off on getting a dog. i just trying to, trying to make the point that it's work. It's work mentally, it's mel uh, work physically, and you have to take care of the dog. They, they don't have thumbs, man. They ain't got no thumbs. They can't go get you coffee. You got to uh, wait on them hand and foot, <laughs> especially if you spoil them. All right, folks, that's about all I'm going to say. Maybe we'll do a few more chapters on dogs. After all, my channel is the dog, man. I know a little bit about them. Thanks for watching and happy tales.